So there is really just one last uh, material that needs to be created, and that's for the strip uh, along the sides of the roof. And this is such a small uh, area uh, that we can just very quickly create this using uh, the two maps we already created. So uh, going into Photoshop, uh, what we can do is take the color uh, from the wall and also the color uh, from uh, the roof and just kind of split them uh, in order to uh, cut it in half. So uh, what I'm going to do is duplicate the layer uh, to a new material. Uh, cut and click OK. And then uh, duplicate the other color to that new material. Uh, and just use a couple of portions. I want it to be fairly consistent. Uh, and I am going to end up with a much smaller canvas size because I don't need to have uh, a huge image. Uh, so we're probably going to bring it down to 512 uh, or at least reduce uh, the height. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take the canvas size now, uh, reducing the pixel height to 256. Uh, actually, we can bring it down to 128 uh, and we're going to stretch it or scale it downward uh, towards the top. And we just want the material to fit uh, within this space. So I am going to need to uh, just adjust the scale. And I'm going to take that color uh, from the roof, Control T, and just scale it downward. Uh, turn on snap. Uh, we can snap that in place. Um, maybe take that wall color, bring it down, and just pretty much divide it in half. Uh, then uh, we can do an inner shadow uh, for the color. And uh, I do want a little more definition uh, around the edges. Uh, so I'm going to create a new layer, uh, fill it uh, with really any color uh, using the paint bucket, uh, get rid of the fill percent, the fill opacity, and then uh, use an inner shadow, uh, get rid of the distance, and just kind of increase the size. Uh, you can leave it on the edges if you want, but if you are going to end up maybe doubling or increasing the UV uh, or the U scale, uh, we would change. Uh, then you might not want the edge shadows, which means you can uh, hit Control T to free transform and just transform uh, that layer outside the boundary. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this for a color. And uh, I'm just going to open the history, create a new duplicate, uh, flatten, C for the crop, uh, and just crop out the rest of that image so it's just uh, this color. And then we can go back uh, and create uh, our other maps we're going to need, uh, basically generating the normal. Uh, so I am going to uh, save this uh, as the building uh, one roof trim. And then uh, we can create another copy uh, to create a template for the normal. Uh, so uh, let's start with uh, the rough color, image adjustments, and black and white. And we want to give us a higher point than uh, the bottom layer. But I am going to be uh, adding an overlay. Uh, this is really just to uh, decide what's going to be extruded and what isn't. And then we'll double click, uh, add a color overlay, white, and adjust the opacity amount, make it a little higher. Uh, so on the color, we can go to image adjustments, black and white. 
and I'm going to select auto and that actually should be good at auto so click OK uh, double click to add color overlay of black uh, increase the opacity amount uh, just give us a nice a separation elevation uh, and I do want this top part to be really all over the place uh, it'll help blend with uh, the roof tiles uh, and their edges uh, so we could also use this as a diffusion and also the normal uh, so a couple of different options uh, to use this with I'm going to create a duplicate and flatten uh, we do need uh, to create our layered TIFF uh, for the total file. So we can use that uh, copy we had before, uh, name that first layer color, and then uh, go over here, we can just copy it, uh, paste it in, and this is going to be our diffusion. And then uh, going back, we can hit M and just click to deselect filter, uh, and then run the NVIDIA filter. Uh, we'll do a scale of uh, we'll do 20, a 3 by 3, uh, maybe a 4 sample should be good. Uh, and we'll use uh, the color space. Uh, that might be a little too gritty. Uh, let's go back. Uh, we'll use max RGB. And we can just reduce the output. I just want to make sure that this upper part is really I'm going to have the biggest impact, so using the max RGB is going to work the best uh, rather than the color space. Uh, if you are not keen on these lines uh, that are showing, uh, we might be able to undo that and uh, just run it or 5 by 5 uh, to smooth it out. Uh, so maybe this is going to work a little bit better. Uh, we don't want to run into any uh, large problems. Uh, so copy the canvas uh, or you can duplicate the layer uh, paste call it normal and then save this uh, as a TIFF file uh, with layers uh, roof material uh, roof underscore trim material just modifying with the name uh, save it and um, I'm gonna use and I have been using basically a zip compression uh, LZW for the image compression. Uh, so we've got layers uh, compressed and the images compressed. Um, but a TIFF is a non destructive format, so it's not going to decrease quality. Uh, so now we can go into uh, Cinema, create a new material, uh, roof trim, and uh, double click to edit the material, and we're going to load in the image for the color and we can select color and go back uh, clicking on the color channel again copy that texture paste it onto the diffusion texture and the normal texture and then all we need to do is just select our channels or our uh, different layers to assign and uh, then we need to drag the material onto uh, the object uh, within the object browser and assign it to uh, our trim selection uh, so because of the scale differences it is being squished uh, quite a bit uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at a render and see how it's going to show if we need to we can just stretch out uh, the color layer, especially for the roof. And I might go ahead and uh, throw in a bump on there as well. Uh, go to the material and edit the roof trim, just copying the diffusion uh, and putting it on the bump channel. Uh, that's more than enough uh, for such a simple material. Uh, the normal we can keep at MIP. I will increase the intensity to 200 uh, and that's going to make it a lot rougher. We could also add a bit more detail uh, going back to the normal 
uh, because there really isn't an edge, uh, what I'm going to do is add in uh, just a rectangle shape around the top, uh, changing the color to black. Uh, rasterize that layer, right clicking on it, and uh, reduce the opacity. And then I can run a filter over this, or I can distort it. Um, you could also use a brush uh, to modify that. Uh, if I wanted to create kind of a separation, uh, as if the tiles were uh, going under in different directions, uh, in different portions. Uh, I could also uh, just create a copy and uh, use the bottom uh, layer, V on the keyboard, just move it down uh, and then change the blending style, uh, maybe to color burn and reduce the opacity until uh, we get some just some changes overall. Uh, we could even do that for both of them. Uh, one nice thing that might work for this is to blur, uh, so filter, blur, Gaussian, uh, and just do a little bit of a Gaussian blur on the edge. Uh, so it adds a little more variance. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this and generate a new normal. Uh, using the same settings as before and then just copy uh, that over paste it, call it normal to save the file. Uh, go back into Cinema and uh, update the material uh, for the normal. And I also want to try uh, bringing down the polygons uh, for that part of the roof. Uh, we could probably make that section a little larger. Uh, so select Building 1, Polygons, and uh, using the Live Selection tool, uh, just selecting the two polygons uh, underneath. Uh, once again, remembering we did merge these together, so we might have to zoom in and select them manually, and then uh, we can just move it down. Uh, so if we want to fill more of a space uh, with that material, uh, we can do quite a bit with it. Uh, you can see there's more than enough information there. So we'll go ahead and make it a little bit thicker. And that way we can take full advantage of that geometry instead of it just picking up a highlight. So I have decided, uh, of course, to split or add a new uh, polygon uh, to the top of the roof. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, go into the polygons and select uh, these top two polygons with a live selection, and then select connected. Uh, since it is separated from the rest of the model still, uh, it will just select the roof. And uh, I'm going to use the knife tool and uh, set this to uh, plane. I just want to make sure that we're only affecting a certain area. And uh, the reason I really want to use uh, the knife rather than uh, beveling the edge uh, is because it will create new polygons that will not fit with uh, the UV maps. Uh, so what we can do is just cut uh, the sides and then grab these points uh, in the center and just move them down, uh, or the edges. Uh, so I'm going to switch to edges uh, and uh, actually go up to selection and use uh, a loop selection. Select that loop. I switch to the move tool and just move that down. So now we have it rounded on top, uh, which will get rid of that really fine point, make it look a lot better and we stay consistent with uh, the UV map. Uh, if needed, uh, we can bring it down a little further uh, or increase 
or use a different shading mode. Uh, because we do want to make sure that that is smoothed out. Uh, so we go to the Fong tag. Uh, let's go ahead and set this up to 55. Uh, adjusting this will really change the look uh, of the material. Uh, if we bring it up to 180 degrees, uh, it's going to basically round everything off. Uh, much more intensified effect uh, with the polygon faces. Uh, if we use uh, the edge breaks, uh, it will then uh, allow us to uh, keep some of those sharper edges uh, around the sides uh, without horribly affecting the diffusion. For the most part, uh, I do want to use a lower value, turn off use edge breaks, and just kind of manually set this. Right now it's set up for an overall amount for the entire material. Uh, I'm going to set this up to 51%. And now we have uh, those new polygons, so let's take a look uh, at how it looks uh, with that rounded top. Uh, and it definitely looks a lot better. Uh, you need to make some adjustments, I think, to uh, some of the shader values. And the normal map on uh, the wall uh, where some of these larger pieces are, uh, because I had mixed it with a larger sample, um, they're not as crisp as I would like them to be. Uh, so I might just go back to that map uh, or that template and just create a new uh, normal map for it. Uh, but if you want a closer shot uh, without having to create any additional geometry, uh, you can use those normal maps to displace uh, the texture and uh, using a sub-polygon displacement uh, create something a little more realistic looking. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that with uh, just the tile uh, to take a look. And I'm going to open the roof template. And uh, let's just create or use this for displacement. Uh, so I'm just going to flatten the image, uh, control A, copy, uh, open up the material, uh, which is going to be the roof material, uh, which is a TIFF file, and paste in uh, the displacement. And then we can go back and make sure that we close um, that material that we just flattened and not save the changes. Uh, so save the material, uh, but not the template. Uh, go back into Cinema, and we can uh, select the Building 1 roof. Uh, we can just copy any of those maps, go to Displacement, Paste in, and then choose uh, the Displacement layer. Turn on Sub-Polygon Displacement. And we could round the geometry. Uh, probably need to adjust the height and intensity, uh, but let's just go ahead and take a look. <laughs> and it looks like um, we'll need to turn off the round geometry uh, because, in fact, this is affecting the entire object. Uh, so we don't want to round out everything because it's going to affect even the other uh, tags. Uh, so even this in itself, um, for something farther away, will add uh, even more variation uh, to the model. Uh, so that way it, the edges aren't perfectly straight. Uh, I do need to adjust, however, the uh, intensity or the height. Uh, so let's go ahead and set it. Let's try two centimeters. And then we can render that out. Uh, and it should just be a very small amount of displacement now. Uh, just enough to distort the edges. And then if you want to run that displacement uh, on the trim uh, or the other uh, layers, you can uh, easily do that. If you need a more accurate result, uh, you may need to darken the edges of the map.
uh, either in the creation of the normal or the displacement, uh, just like I did for the trim. Uh, and that can really help uh, fix a couple of issues. Uh, if you need more detail, you can increase the subdivision level. Uh, this is such a low polygon model, uh, increasing it to a level of 8 isn't really going to uh, kill the scene. Um, and we've generated uh, some more even roof tiles, but keep in mind it is also displacing uh, the bottom roof tiles because that polygon, uh, those bottom polygons are part of the roof. Uh, so if you need to, you can separate uh, with a new tag or just tie them, uh, connect the UV uh, for the trim and just kind of limit it uh, to a certain area or just create an entirely new map. Uh, maybe with just that wall texture. Uh, so let's change the subdivision level to 3. Turn off keep original edges uh, and take a look at a render of that. And we were able to create uh, more rounding on the edges or more displacement on the edges uh, to move into the trim and we have a pretty nice variation and it will render very, very quickly uh, because it's so low polygon. Uh, if you were to copy or create a numerous amount of copies of this uh, for creating a city then uh, you may not want to run the displacement on anything too far away. Uh, you'd really want to manipulate the normal to kind of look like that and bend the diffusion. Uh, I am going to modify uh, that fong angle bringing it down because it looks like it was causing some issues uh, with the side but that may also be part of the displacement uh, because the displacement can uh, destroy some of the other selections if they're not set up for it uh, but for the most part I'd say that this object is pretty much done uh, and nothing really needs to be changed uh, any further. If you decide that you need more detail around the edges of the object uh, and the corners, uh, what you could do is the same thing uh, that we did for the roof uh, along the top uh, because you wouldn't want to have to reconstruct the UV map. Uh, but for the most part this should work uh, okay and uh, Really, if you're going to end up getting close to this, you would want to run that displacement on that material, too. And we can apply the same techniques to the other models uh, in order to uh, generate some nice distant objects uh, for use of the city.